Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Banter Blitz. My name is Jan Gustafsson. I am delighted to be here on this free day in the Sinkfield Cup with all of you. Mm. That's all I got. Anything happening in the chess world? This is, of course, Banter Blitz. Ooh, I can't speak yet. Give me... Let me drink some water. Hmm. We'll get there. We'll get there. So this is Banter Blitz. The fantastic format where you get to challenge me and has been Grandmaster to play a Blitz game. In order to do so, I think in the Chess24 chat, there's a link. Other than that, you can click on create a game, type in my username, which is of course Tupac Schachur, then find me. I don't show up here because it's myself, so I can't challenge myself. But pick the one with the GM title. Challenge me to a five or whatever you fancy minute game of chess and we'll play a game and talk about our views of the world let's see if we have any challenges you have to be premium member on chess 24 to challenge me in order to become one you can use my voucher code yanistan at checkout and get 40 percent off i know let's jump into the action Oh, this guy, Destrothar Tormentas. That sounds scary. Is the board on, sc on screen? Kind of. He plays e4. Let's be brave. First game. I always do great in the first game. Play e4, c5. Knight to c3 and knight to c6. Bishop b5. This is a theoretical line, I guess. Popular in I don't know what chess circles. Who plays this? E6, knight, E2. What am I supposed to do? Knight F6 looks normal. I'm sure I've had this position before. I think there's a trick after short castles that I should not play D5 because then after E D E D. There was something, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, knight takes d4, that was dangerous, if memory serves me well. So I'll play a6 instead, hint at b5. If he goes e5, I can play d5 myself, I think. It's a typical counter. And now after d3, b5, I guess this is some sort of position, but how bad can it be? I'll take the bishop. Should I go bishop b7? It's a bit of a dumb square for the bishop. The problem is this pawn is hanging. What is this, a three-minute game? Okay, so I shouldn't th think or talk forever. I'll go b4, because I don't want to put my bishop here just yet. Maybe I want to do something in the center. He goes back, now I'll go d5. Doesn't look terrible, does it? What's happening, chat? Yup, how are you doing? Biting on granite. Is it granite or granite? Granite, right? Should I take with the granite or with the pawn here? Kind of like taking with the knight. It gives his knight this square, but also gives my bishop a pretty juicy diagonal. Bring out the other pieces first. But eventually, hopefully, his bishop can do something here. The problem is if I go bishop b7 directly, there is knight a5, so I'll go bishop a5 first to take that square. Then put my bishop here. Anyway, biting on granite is saying, Jan, I notice you wear your watch on your right wrist. Are you lefty? Nope. I'm wearing my watch on my left wrist. I'm right-handed. I don't want to go f5. I think I'll actually go f5 myself. This might look a little drastic because it's weakening this square. But make sure this knight has no good squares. And once my bishop gets here, this should be powerhouse. Let me 
Mr. Destrothar is thinking about it. Because queen e2 attacks the pawn. Okay, six looks overly fancy. Not sure that was needed. But it does cover the pawn. He'll probably think about some rook a5, but I don't think it works. Queen d3. Time to make some moves. Clearing this square for my other rook. And one day I'll threaten something. That day may never come. How do we loosen up his position? Just CD looks good enough. Not sure what to do next. The usual, don't know what to do next problem. I'll actually just take. But I, as usual, <laughs> mildly misplayed this. Should still be doing well, but I could have been doing much better. The hope is this bishop will eventually emerge as a big force. <clears throat> but I can't say that I did well helping the poor guy to spread his wings and fly. Some checks. Doesn't give the checks. Okay. Time. Time to win the game. The usual, good position, bad moves, flagging. So we do it. Can Jan hear us? No, I can read what you're saying, but I can't hear what you're saying. It's, it's how this works. Okay, shall we play another game? Anything to debate? Anything out there? It's the crypto. Three minutes is so stressful. Did I accept? I tried. Here we are. Crypto boy. It's d4, d6. That allows me to grab some space. The center of the board. Queen d2 hints at bishop h6, knight g4. Supposed to go here. And now this bishop, if he gets the rest can escape. You could argue black mainly weakened his position in the process. So knight g4 is usually not something to be very concerned about. c6, I guess I'll just push it away. And bring some pieces out. So aggressive. I'll bring more pieces out. Stopping b4, knight takes e4. White position looks fairly harmonious. Well, black is a bit all over the place, pushing, pushing pawns on the left side, on the right side, but not on the center. Crypto. 
what should I do next? I can just put my rocks somewhere. One day, maybe I can break here. Pawn to c5. Is it time to go for some action? e5, of course, weak as a bunch of squares. So I'm not 100% sure about it. I could also just play d5 and keep my keep my advantage nice and stable. But now let's let's go. Knight h5. Let's leave the knight on the rim. Yeah, now we expect this should be seven. Then I want to go queen e3 to stop him from doubling my pawns here. Here we are. Hmm. <clears throat> queen d7. Time for g4. Or is there some queen c6 nuisance? Mm. Could get a little double edged. Now let's go. Weaken my king a little bit in the process, but I did win a pawn. And the black king is not exactly safe himself. I guess many good moves here. But I'll play bishop f5 instead. I see a bunch of questions in the chat, understandably, about the current chess drama with Magnus withdrawing from the Sinkfield Cup and the accusations against, or not by Magnus, but by, by many people on the internet against Hans Niemann. Let me win this game and we can we can talk about it. I already did talk about it quite a bit on our podcast, Chicken Chess Club with Laurent Fressinet and Peter Heine. And I also did a video on my on my German YouTube channel where I gave my my thoughts, but that was before the the Hans Niemann interview from yesterday. Which hasn't really changed my thoughts at all, but it was a remarkable, remarkable, remarkable interview to watch. Um, but let me let me try to make some moves here first. Rook a seven. You gotta keep the horsey. Shall continue. And crypto resigns. <clears throat> Thanks for the game, Mr. Crypto. So chess drama. Um the short version is I don't know why Magnus withdrew um, like all of us I've only seen seen the tweet and the speculation that ensued I generally um, trust Magnus's 
opinion on stuff. He's a he's a smart guy, and I'd be very curious. Hot <laughs> take: Magnus is a smart guy. I'd be very curious what he has, um, and if he'll if he'll talk about it. As as for me, yeah, I've done commentary on the games live. I also did an analysis of the Carlson Niemann game, and I've watched all the. Hans interviews, I could not see anything that made me think of cheating. Like pe the game itself, okay, Hans is well prepared. I talked about that a lot in my video, but I'll give you the short version. And then things are are up and down. He gets a better endgame, misses some chances. Um, Magnus gives some chances, so it just looked like a high-level game. But yeah, before... This whole scandal broke when I did the analysis. I didn't think at all that there could be could be foul play involved. Not many people have pointed to Hans' interview after after that game, where he gave a sort of weird explanation as to why he had prepared that line. That was a big surprise. This d4, knight f6, c4, e6, g3, uh, knight c3, bishop b4, g3, which Magnus hadn't played much. Um, and he said it was by, by miracle and that there was a game, uh, what was it, Carlsen So in 2018 and that was 4 knight f3, which is really a different line. After 4 knight f3, I'm not sure I can make moves here, after 4 knight f3, you, you don't transpose to that. So people found that suspicious that I had even heard before. The whole news broke, like not from anybody in St. Louis, but that people thought it was suspect. But I think the explanation we had on the Chicken Chess Club podcast and also that I gave later, I, I can't move the pieces here. All right. So you'll have, to, you'll have to bear with me. Makes a lot of sense that you get the same line they played in the game via the Catalan move order. And of course you prepare the Catalan when facing Magnus. It's arguably been his main opening or one of the main openings. And in the Catalan, if after d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, g3. You play bishop b4, check. And white goes knight c3, which is a sideline, but it's a move. You could very much check, thinking I'm ready for knight d2 or bishop d2. Um, if white goes knight c3 there, then after castles. Let's say bishop g2, d c, a3. I hope you guys are good at blindfold chess. Bishop c3, b c, c5. You get the same position. And clicking there one can get to what happened in the game fairly quickly. And then, yeah, the next question would be why Hans wouldn't bring this up in the post-game interview. But I, I also thought that was normal. That was before he had to defend himself against any cheating allegations. And you don't want um, accusations, allegations. Whatever. You don't want to give any information about your repertoire, which if he had said, I prepared this via the Catalan move order, then he would tell people that in the Catalan he intends to play knight f3, d5, g3, bishop b4, check. So instead, probably he caught himself thinking, oh, I don't, I don't want to say that. He, to my mind, made up some story or recalled some games. <clears throat> was by miracle there was this game. Carlsen So, and I played g3 back in 2016, which people found suspicious, but to me it was more or less, well, having thought about this, and I heard this theory first from Laurent Fresinet actually, it was, yeah, because he wanted to, had prepared it via the Catalan move order, but then didn't want people to know about his opening prep in the Catalan, which is fairly normal. Few top players will be honest or will give you information. Oh, in this different line, I was intending to play that, so I checked that. Um... So, yeah, given by the game and by that interview, I couldn't see anything strange then. People also found the interview after the game against Ali Reza Strange, where a lot of the lines he gave after this peace sacrifice didn't make sense after Queen G3, DC4. There, I don't know, but I still find it hard to read anything much into an interview where people are giving strange lines after after a game sometimes you're tired sometimes you don't want to admit that you you missed something and so on and so forth so once again the the moves i mean there were so many 
misses and not computer moves by both sides. That's always strange to me saying, oh, but he played queen g3. That's a computer move. So this is weird when just a move before e5 is not a computer move and the computer says that's a serious mistake or it's a mistake and you should play queen g3 instead and then a bunch of moves made later. He also makes some very strange moves. So we ca I don't think we can cherry pick. This one move is a computer move and therefore it's strange if yeah, most super grandmasters will make, I don't know, 80% of computer moves. Um, so that's just given on the interviews and the accusations that I saw. I couldn't really see any indicators of foul play. You could argue he has a good result. But yeah, if you look at the games, there are so many ups and downs and missed chances. That just looks like, yeah, he's been playing well. But other than that, not much to say. All that with the disclaimer that, yeah, I don't know what Magnus knows, what his reasons were. I just saw, like all of us, um, what's out there on on the internet, what's on Reddit chess, what uh, videos people are making, and the the Hans Niemann videos. I, I watched this, or I, I watched most of the, the latest press conference, the 30 minutes where he addresses everything, where I think he confirms this Catalan theory that we put out there, which also makes sense, because now, of course, he has to defend himself, so it makes sense to give up that bit of equity saying that it's via different move order and um, and yeah it's intense i haven't watched it in detail and i can't recall all of it i won't want to watch it maybe later in my stream or whatever and, and talk about it but it hasn't made me change my change my opinion so yeah that's all i got on the once again limited information that i'm working with of course i tried to squeeze some some info out of Peter Heine, who's there, or they might be traveling by now, who was there in St. Louis with Magnus, but Peter Heine in our podcast, understandably, didn't didn't say very much about it, because yeah, very understandable. So that's that's my current take. But as as all of us, I'm eagerly following the. The developments it's it's a, it's a very tough topic to speak on for everybody because of course cheating in chess is the worst thing you can do but uh, accusing people of cheating is also a horrible thing if <clears throat> if they're they're innocent so it's it's a very very awkward spot and yeah one treats very carefully there maybe the good thing is that these conversations because there's always lots of cheating gossip and discussions in the chess world that some are now coming out into the open and i think that will yeah make it make it harder for anybody to cheat um i think is good but what i've seen from the moves and from the interviews from Hans Niemann in this tournament. Nothing suggested foul play to me. Okay, end of statement. Back with Banter Blitz. Do we have any challenges? What about Jinko Bilaba? Jinko, Ginko, Biloba. Mr. Biloba is not around left during my my speech. What can we do? You 
Imperator, 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 I should know that word. As Germans, we say Imperator. Imperator. Oh, he's a feeder master. G3. This should be four check. I'm well prepared against knight c3. Just letting you know. Just put it out there. That's a safer move. We shall both castle, and I'll take the pawn. What's the line here? I usually forget. I think you're not supposed to go b5, because then after a4, bishop d2, he has knight f takes d2. So I could either take on d2 directly or play some move like b6. But I'm greedy, I'll take. The point is now knight ft2 makes no sense because I can take on d4 and after knight bd2 I can try to keep my pawn. b5, he can try all kinds of things, a4 or b3, but generally I don't think that black is in any particular trouble here. The computers tend to say about equal. Take go bishop b7 and say, can you count? Fc1, do you go c6? That's a slightly sad move to make. Then again, I do like pawns. Ugh. Greed versus fear, the eternal problem. Could go knight a6, then rook a5, knight b4, rook a8. Let's keep the pawn. Once again, you could make a case for knight a6, but knight bd7 not to allow knight knight e5. Also looks reasonably logical to me. He was knight e5 anyway. All right. So I'll take now. Big question: where the horsey should go? Knight d5 looks obvious. Gives him access to this square though after knight e4. Knight d7 also doesn't look bad to me. I'll go here. Bishop c6, I have rook c8. This pawn is hanging. Maybe plays whatever, f4. Then I can think about queen b6 followed by c5. And by think about, I mean idly talk nonsense and then play it anyway. Queen b2. Does cover the pawn. Yes, I'll still go queen b6. If I get c5, okay, he can get some compensation putting his knight here, but it doesn't look very convincing to me. Maybe queen d4 is a move. Then I'll have to think ugh, about c5. Queen takes d7, bishop g2, king g2. Some rook to d8, which looks like it works. Here we are. I said I have to think about it. I forgot the thinking part, but I'll just do it. Still looks like it works to me. This rook or the other rook. I can't trap the queen. I should take this one. question is, how much have I achieved here? I have a check, I guess he'll play queen c6. And can I win this endgame? I should probably take. After rook takes, the threat is rook takes a5, which is a great pity. I need to lose a move to create a luft. Not sure which one is the sensible one. g5, rook b6. Time is running out of it. I'll just play g5. Could certainly make a case for king of 8 or h6 or h5 or whatever. I don't know. 
g5 is the advantage let's say rook b6 rook d5 f4 maybe i can try to restrict the, the king a bit by playing g4 and goes rook c5 how's this the chicken I'll just push this guy and hope for the best. What's the time control by the way? It's three plus two, yeah? Yeah, three plus two. I don't think I'm winning here, unfortunately. Which is a great pity. Sad, I prefer to be winning. But I'm not. The A2, rook A4. There's no win. Try this, but he has rook c4. Once again, doesn't look like I have any wins. No, that's sad. Not sure about g4, because now my king is within reach of the c pawn. I think you should, should just have pushed it um, in order to simplify. This might also be fine, but at least I have some hope. Walking my king up the board. Trying to organize counterplay on the king's side, but how much counterplay is it really? Mm, which pawn should I take? Maybe this one. That's a mistake, sir. I don't know if I'm winning here. Probably. Yeah, it looks hard for white to, to defend. I just want to bring the king, and I don't see how he can create enough play. Probably has to try f5, king c4, fe, fe. That looks winning. I will know. Anyway, thanks for the game, Imperator 60. Yeah, I think what gave me a chance was this move g4. If white just pushes c5 here. I can still bring the king, I can't count. I have the not being able to count weakness. c5, king of 8, c6, king e7. And maybe it's not so simple. Because I can still stop the pawn with my king. So maybe there are some chances. But who really knows? Anyway, well played. That's why I exchange rooks on c4, not on a4. Because then I can't get to the king. To the a pawn with my king. Varus says, I think rook c4 was a mistake. Yeah, I miscounted. I thought you could just go c5 here. No clue if this is lost, but yeah. After rook b4, rook c8, obviously. There should be other moves. I wasn't sure rook a2. Uh, rook a3, I have rook c2. I can pick up, pick up the pawn. But of course, it shouldn't be winning. Even rook a4. Don't know. Don't know. Not going to claim I was better here. I think I did something slightly wrong earlier. Let's play more games. What about Bro Gabriel? Rest day and young banter blitzing dedicated. Yeah, generally I'm supposed to do banter blitz. Like, who knows what the future brings, but for now, on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. It hasn't always happened because, of course, the tournament schedule overrides the banter blitzing schedule. But since it's a free day, here we are. Speaking of here we are, Mr. Gabriel is not here. Is 
there anybody out there? Mariam Fatima. Oh, I was ready to go G3 against the Nimza. But instead we play the good old Kalsbat. structure I've played all my life. I recall games from German Junior Championships with Bishop F5, Bishop F6, followed by Queen B3. The good old days when chess was easy. Now, it's a grind. Am I supposed to go Bishop F4 here? No. Ah, now I have 394, I can still go bishop e4. Always confused here when, it, when knight e4 works and when it doesn't. I guess after h6, then I would play bishop f4, because then after no, bishop h4, knight e4 might work. Passport is saying, what did you make of Peter Heine? Tweet of a coffee cup, Jan from Kingside Diner. I don't know. Didn't he have a coffee cup with something written on it that could be perceived as chess content? Was it Kingside Diner? I would guess that's all there is to it, isn't it? Is to it, no? Oh, Kingside. It's a chess term. Let's tweet. Knight g6, here knight e5 is the most principal move. I have a soft spot for bishop f6 followed by b4. I'll do that. Looks very dumb. But it has some logic. Because now the knight on f on g6 doesn't do much. It probably has to move again in order to prepare g6. Well, I can play prepare the usual minority attack. And you take here to stop any counterplay with... <clears throat> Knight e4, knight h5, whatever. Now we've executed the minority attack, which is to push our pawn to b5, and thus inducing a weakness into the black position, no matter what black does. This should be pleasant. I don't have the two bishops, but this guy's not very active, and I can always go bishop f5, exchanging the other half of the bishop pair when I feel the need. Having said that, can't do it anymore, because the knight was just ready to step into the way. Still, slightly better for white. This bishop is bad. <clears throat> what do we take? I guess nothing. I should also try not to lose on time. And in my experience, the best way not to lose on time is to make all your moves while you still have time on the clock. That's what I've learned the years. Radio Jan should return. I don't know. You want him to weigh in on chess drama? Not sure. Not sure if he even follows chess these days. As for the position, Mario and Fatima is fighting very well. I don't think I have all that much. Still some mild pressure because I can target, target a bunch of pawns here. But not too much has happened. I learned from my favorite chess book, My System by Aaron Nimzovich, that two rooks on the seventh rank are good. Who would have guessed? See, I can do stuff here. Here we are. Radio Jan might get cancelled in this political environment. That could happen, but I haven't heard much of him the last like six years, so I'm not sure how worried he would be about getting cancelled. 
Thanks for the game. Mariam Fatima. Must I lose to this bogus? Been around for years. I think I lost to that bogus once. Maybe not. GM Gustafsson, what is your opinion on the rise of Twitter and social media? Wow. As a mature person, I'm very mature. Do you think that the world was better before such things existed. Ah, so you're using mature for old, which is fair. I don't know. First of all, follow me on Twitter at GM Jan Gustafsson. I need, I need followers to fill the giant gap in my soul. Secondly, as someone who grew up in the 90s, I will always look at that as the, the golden age. We had enough technology, but we didn't stare at our cell phones all day long. We had good movies. Like, remember the 90s? We had Pulp Fiction, Seven, The Usual Suspects, Jurassic Park, Saving Private Ryan. Not every movie was a Marvel movie. Um, am I getting checkmated here, reminiscing? It could happen. It's likely. But what can you do? Um, but I also think that everybody will look at their teenage years as sort of a, a golden, golden age, no matter when these years were. So... I'm in trouble here. I don't like being in trouble. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much me thinking the 90s was such a great time. It says about the 90s or whenever you are between age 10 and 20. <clears throat> Other than that, I don't know. The usual blah, blah. I'm sure there's good and bad to it. I'm completely addicted to my stupid phone. I stare at it all day instead of getting anything useful done, which I don't think is great. And my best guess is I'm not the only one. And randomly refreshing Twitter. I don't even tweet that much, although you should still follow me on Twitter, at GM Jan Gustafsson. Um, but randomly refreshing your timeline, I don't gain any information or joy from it. It's just, you know, mindlessly scrolling down. So I'm not sure that's great, but I'm also not that smart, and I'm sure smarter, more eloquent people out there have smarter, more eloquent things to say about the poison that is or not is our modern world. My position is pretty poison here. 95 and Queen H6 check is looming. I don't want to lose to this Bogues. Am I getting checkmated after Bishop D5? Maybe. Hmm. Any tricks? Nope. Oh no, my bishop. Hmm. Let's stay at the position for many more seconds than play. The first move that comes to mind. Viking H2. So 3 plus 0, so. Time to speed it up. G 
just a little bit. Or you want to draw two pawns up? Oh, could have seen that coming. Good game, Mr. Bokes. Can't really complain about that draw. Well played. Let's play Yup, Bantablitz regular. Good old Spanish. Fide master Yup. Feels like every game against Yup is the same. Usually I don't take on e3. Let's mix it up and take. I don't like taking that much because there's very real danger of getting checkmated once you played h6. But we gotta mix it. I have a feeling I played the other lines against him countless times already. It's not our first rodeo. Now I should be fine, no? There's no more attack and these pawns potentially could be slightly weak. Not sure how to play it as usual. Could go f5 or d5, but I guess I'll just make a bunch of random moves first. I'm never a fan of d4 in these structures. Obviously, he's threatening d5, but if I manage to parry that, it does leave more serious pawn weaknesses. So, generally, you are happy to see d4 here. Might be a good move, but it is, it is very weakening. I have some weaknesses of my own. Still, not sure d4 is a good idea. Having said all these things, what am I supposed to do now? Let's work here. Mm. What are we doing here? We're closing the position. But the horse.
Is it time to go f5 after knight d2? Or do I continue shuffling? Every day I'm shuffling. f5 is a bit weakening. I wonder if I can prove further first. f6 looks insane, I'll admit. Trying to grab some space before eventually going f5. I struggle counting. How often was this attacked? I needed I needed to cover it, right? G4. Time has come. Have more rooks, sir. Tense finish. I'm not sure if I was really better here. I think my f6 plan was very dumb. I wouldn't go g4, it gives all these weaknesses, but even here. If after f even even here, if white takes, I wasn't that sure, because there's always counterplay on the g file. Rook g1. Maybe queen h5 check, but I'm not sure I played this overly well. The usual. That was e takes f5 as well. Thanks for the game. What's chat up to? Talking about the 90s. I never had an, um, had an Amiga. I had a personal computer. Um, 486SX25 with an 80 megabyte hard drive. Those were the days. Let's play Flinton Court. Rest day in Sinkfield today. Tomorrow, the action, or what's left of the action, shall continue. Mr. Court, you there? No court. I should check how recent the challenges are. Maybe some of these are weeks and weeks old. Orangutan. My name is right on the screen. Please spell it correctly. Thanks. I should do ASMR. I agree. I like that La Roca always does 15 different challenges, so I see them. But we played him last show. Then again, this is becoming our little Bantam Blitz Club. So, opponent repetitions will not be possible to avoid. Good old C3 Sicilian. Haven't played that for a while. Um, You guys know my policies. You can misspell it, that's fine. But don't mock me. <clears throat> Here we are, knight f3, e6. And d6. A 
is, I think, the topical line. When last time I checked, which is a while ago, but I would guess not that much has changed. This was fine. You take and go queen c7, winning half a tempo on the pawn after bishop d2. Knight d7 is supposed to be fine. There were some sharp lines, which I struggle to recall as usual. Maybe rook b1 was a move here, so knight g5 somewhere. Maybe after knight d7, knight g5 was a move. They didn't fully work as far as I know, but I'm also hazy on the details. Degen Gaming saying, Jan, have you watched the show C on Apple TV with Jason Momoa? Superbly underrated sci-fi fantasy series. You're preaching to the choir. What I always wanted was like a version of Game of Thrones where you have politics, intrigue, and <clears throat> Jason Momoa killing people. But I thought, what would be better than Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones, but no one can see. And boom, there came C. They can't see each other. But they're still highly, highly proficient. Or Jace Momoa is highly, highly proficient at killing people in brutal fashion in very different ways. No, I love C. I watched the first two seasons. I think season three is out. I'll, I'll definitely revisit it. Big fan. As for this position, he has these hanging pawns. I think black is supposed to be doing all right. Not so sure about rook c8. That might be a somewhat lazy move. I should pay some attention to bishop h7, but currently I can still take. And after knight g5, go back. King g8. Queen h5, knight f6. Um, but I'm unsure where to put my pieces. If I should play h6, I would like to exchange light square bishops, but that's not going to be going to be easy to do. So black should be fine, but I don't know what to do. C1. Fair enough. What do people do with their pieces here? Probably exchange them, right? We need to get rid of some pieces. These hanging pawns are good for developing potential activity, but they're also called hanging pawns for a reason. If we can simplify a little bit, they will be weaknesses. And that's why Bishop F4 makes sense to me. Maybe five. Do I take or do I threaten checkmate first? Or none of the above. Ninety five looks like a good move. Slightly cutting off my queen from from the troops. I might be threatening rook d four. I always hope he misses that. Cheapos. No worry, Zivic. Okay, this looks like the wrong time for rook takes d4. So do I continue our simplifying policy or do I say now that the king is weakened? Might as well leave some queens on the board. Queen h6, rook h5 is, is not what we want. I guess I'll leave the queens on. Hey, that's threatening something. Don't checkmate me, sir. Still no rook d4? Come on, blunder that already. Please. Queen d4, queen f3 is not quite good enough. Random move. I want to prepare h5, so it's not completely random. That's still random enough. A good player would have spotted h5, rook h5, bishop f3. But I did not still. Now I'll do it. 
finally. My precious. I was rewatching Lord of the Rings. Hot take. Pretty good movies. Is it Lord of the Rings or Lord of the Ring? There's only one ring, right? Should be Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Ring. It's named after... After Sauron. He's the Lord of the Ring. There's rings, yeah, these... There's a one ring to rule them all. Nine rings given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That rings a bell. Nine to the men, three to the elves, and five to the dwarves. Hang on, how many rings are those? That's like 12. I'm great at math. 17. Plus the one ring to rule them all. There's 18 rings. That's more than Phil Jackson has. Sometimes I have the Nazgul over for poker. That's another thing that keeps confusing me. Nazgul are like the undead king dudes, right? Because I always think of their dragons as Nazgul. But they're not the Nazgul, right? Say I'm a big scholar of... I know it's Tolkien, I'm thinking about a funny name to use. I thought about using Rowling, but that's not, not that funny these days. C.S. Lewis doesn't make sense. Who's the dude who wrote Narnia? Anyway. No bigger Silmarillion expert than me. I was watching this new show. What's it called? Rings of Power. Ring of Power, Power to the Ring, something. Mm -hmm. um, eh, eh, not the same magic. Beautiful landscapes, beautifully shot. Didn't care what happened. Or, I'm not sure what was happening. Nothing was really happening, just elves talking to each other in fortune cookie language. And we get some new hobbits that aren't called hobbits. I'm not going to spoil very much because I don't think there's much to spoil. Also with the prequel, yeah, I don't know. There's evil out there lurking somewhere. We know it's going to take, take Sauron a while to regain his strength. And we know what's going to happen, right? So stakes feel mediocre. Maybe that will change. But I was so excited watching the, the fight for Helm's Deep or when Aragorn, Gimli... And that dude from Pirates of the Caribbean, when they're chasing a bunch of Urukai who captured Merry and Pippin, I'm so excited. Or when the cavalry comes while they're fighting for Helm's Deep, or the elves show up. The new show didn't do it to me yet. MW is saying Legolas the elf. Yeah, that's what I said. The dude from Kingdom of Heaven. This is this a good move? Looks stupid. Probably was stupid. But here we are. Should be eight. Don't checkmate me. I have a hunch that there are plans out there to checkmate me. Please don't. House of the Dragon is the only good series right now. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. We don't have HBO in the Germanys. Hmm. 
Who's your favorite football team? I don't know. The New England Patriots? I don't watch American football or soccer, as they call it much. So, not big on any of them. When I was a young man, so much younger than today, I grew up close to Barcelona and there it wasn't a question that you were a Barca supporter. Then in Hamburg, I was always more of a St. Pauli fan than a Hamburger Sportverein fan. But I really, I'm really not that much into football. I used to have season tickets for St. Pauli. You stand there in the rain for two hours. Then it's some, um, yeah, some frustrating 1-1 one -one after 90 minutes. At some point I figured out I could watch an NBA game in that time. Didn't even have to stand in the rain. So, I don't know. We need more, more stuff happening in football. It's my take. What's your favorite cricket team? The West Indies. West Indies all the way. When they have a test match against Australia. I'm busy all week, or however long the match takes. Don't checkmate me. I thought we, we addressed that topic. Okay. Queen to the corner. I lied. I've never watched a cricket match. I've only acquired enough cricket knowledge to troll Peter Swidler with it. Probably I could have taken, taken, but didn't think of that in time. Can't take, King G7, Knight H5. Probably not, it's a great pity. All right, makes a move. H5. Everyone is so aggressive nowadays. You just sit there, minding your own business. They play H5. Okay, let's go. As usual, I have given this very little to no thought. And I now lack a piece. Maybe I should try not to be two pieces done. What is this move? Made no sense. I did some bad, bad things. G4 was a bit nutty. I think you could just take. Not that bishop e5 is there. It's bad. Time to focus. I don't want to focus. I want to keep blitzing out random moves. The problem with that strategy is sometimes it backfires. G5, King H5, GF, King H6. I'm running out of pieces. Sad. So I'll get back to the things I excel at. Take pawns and hope for the best. Is the end game yeah, not great, but better than the middle game. Takes King G two Knight E six. Ah, no. Doesn't look great. Looks lost. 
Oh no, am I gonna lose again? Not sure how you guys feel about it. Me? Eh, don't like losing that much. We have to remind him of the H bomb. And the deep one. Pawns, the pawns saved the day. Thanks for the game, sir. All right, let's play one more. Feeder master, Goodman Q. That's how I consider all the challenges. I think it's a good man and women Q. <clears throat> Gotta go with the times. Good news is I don't think anybody's looked at this line recently. How would you even know the moves here? See? It's out of book. Uh, yeah. No, 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 sir. Or we could check. It's a bit risky. Who's more booked up in the Knight C3 Nim in the G3 Nimzo than Goodman Q? Crappy position take here. I think queen e7 was also correct. Goodman knows. Just so you guys know, I might withdraw from this banter blitz after this game. Oh, but <clears throat> I know the game was h6, rook ft1, but bishop e6 had a feeling for some reason he would know about this. So you go here. Not that impressed with my position, I guess it's okay-ish, but I have these, these weaknesses.
push to pawn. Yeah. It's just not that good, is it? I don't think I'm doing this line justice. I just played some weird moves. But here we are. Thinking. So go here. Hard to be better here. So aggressive. Don't lose on time because of all this aggression. So precise. Still shouldn't lose on time. Ugh. Oh, panic move. Always great. Always great to make panic moves. Oh, and now I'm just lost. Expert play. Don't fancy my chances here that much. Not gonna lie. Shall we try to flag? Crappy line. Not gonna play that again. Um, thanks for the game. Goodman Q. Well played. Alright, boys and girls. On that note, we shall end today's Banter Blitz. Thank you so much for watching. Um, am I following the Eurobasket? A bit. I watched the match Germany-Lithuania. That was fun. Didn't watch the Germany-Slovenia thing. Looks like Luca's doing pretty well, no? Um, but no, I'll, I'll watch when I have time, as you know. I, I lead a very busy life. <laughs> Tomorrow, 8 p.m., European time. We shall continue with coverage of the Sinkfield Cup and all the weirdness around it. As for me, I'll get some food now and then go about my German streaming ways, probably lose more embarrassing chess games. Been a pleasure. 
thank you so much for hanging out and I might see you tomorrow together with the great Rustam Kazumchanov and the fine Lawrence Trent to talk Sink Food Cup. See you then. It's been fun. See you next time. Should I say more? See you then. See you next time. See you around. CC with Jason Momoa. <laughs>